Hey guys, my name is Ollie. Welcome to the Jenkinson Impact. Today, you're gonna to meet a guy called Graham Coolis. He is an absolute character, a joy to listen to, and very funny. He's gonna take you through his journey where he discovered art, art therapy, and now the mission that he is on to be able to deliver a positive impact across the world. And let me tell you, no one is getting in his way. So if you're looking for some inspiration, are interested in alternative methods of therapy, or also just like to hear a couple of blokes have a chat, this is definitely one for you. As always, we're looking to use our voices for good and absolutely Graham is a perfect fit. He is using that voice of his and he is inspiring a lot of people. So enjoy this podcast and I'll catch you on the next one. Let's now do a formal intro after our yeah. pre tro intro. And uh, man, dude, I am really stoked to have you here. Um, you and I met originally in, uh, it was Avenue A, I believe it's called, right? Avenue, the, the, the steak, steakhouse in Bali. And we were very fortunate enough to be sat next to one another. Yeah, that's right. Bali times, mate, brothers. And we were sat next to one another and we ended up having this really great conversation where uh, you were telling me about your journey of moving into the art world and your kind of mission behind mental health and what was really cool as a side of that is that you really 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 remind me of a really cool dude that i knew in uh in perth who has a very similar accent looks very similar to you and has similar mannerisms so i had an excellent experience meeting you for the first time because i had, had all the shout out farron farron smith i'm gonna tag him in this his name is farron smith another cool farron name smith. like coolest farron smith you are the cooler yeah. version of me <laughs> He, he, look, he may very well be. <laughs> not with that being, it's just not possible. So we had a great chat, man. And we really connected and bonded. And we, at that point in time, um, we had a really fantastic conversation. We talked about our different business worlds and what we were up to. Um, and at that point, you were very close to moving to the UK. So we didn't really get too much time to connect, but we'd been back and forthing a little bit. Um, and I basically didn't sharing my appreciation for your work and then realizing how you're tying that into mental health. I think it's really beautiful what you've done here and you've turned your experience into a hero's journey with a, a gift for others. And I've, I've actually been watching you kind of behind the scenes, but also you and I have been interacting through social media, um, through your Patreon account and watching this thing unfold. And I thought, well, how we are all out here is great. You are frozen at the most beautiful spot on your face. <laughs> Graham, can you hear me? Are you still I can there? hear you. I can hear, I'm still okay. here. Can you hear me? For, for the watchers, I got you. For the, it was, that was a really great freeze frame. For the watchers and listeners, I'm in Indonesia. Graham is in the UK. We're doing our best with the internet. Um, <laughs> so we've been connecting forward and back, loving what you're doing, watching your artwork. thought it was really, really great. Um, and to, one, of the, one of the reasons I really had to bring you on here was because this is all about sharing sharing our voices for positive impact. So this podcast, um, for, for those who are new to it and obviously for yourself, is that it's all about sharing positive impact, the things that have had a positive impact on my life and I want to bring them to the world and things that have had a positive impact on my guests' lives and coming on and talking about those too. So, bro, thanks for being here, man. Thank you very much. I'm very pleased to be here. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, it's been an incredible journey and it's been <laughs> awesome getting to know you. And thank you very much for all the encouragement that you've been sending me over the <clears throat> the last uh, little while it's just it really, it's really important that you know sending positive vibes to people you know especially mm. when they're on a mission or they aren't doing something i believe mm. that just small gestures just make a complete powerful powerful um mm. uh, impact on people's lives and that's part of what i'm all about you know and and you are too yeah yeah beautiful man and it's so true isn't it especially you know, you've embarked, and you can go into this a bit more, but you've embarked on this brand new journey from, um, and you can talk about your business that you, you have or had into, you know, full-time art. Like that's a huge transition in itself. Yeah. Okay. So um, just a, is a, is a bit of a story, so you can probably edit yeah. this. <laughs> yeah. So no, no, we, 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 we published straight up. So you tell us a bit of the story, mate. You oh, get in. right. Okay. No worries. So, um, <laughs> the back, so backstory is I'll, I'll try and go over it as quick as possible, because if you guys want to check out the story, it's all over my social medias on Graham Cullis Art on Instagram, YouTube, and my Facebook page. Um, so 
but the backstory is I the brief story is that I moved to mm. Bali with a new job that I had acquired um, to get myself uh, basically I manifested a job position for myself years ago um, to get myself remote because I love Bali I've been going to Bali for 12 years on and off and now I'm like how the hell do I stay here um, yeah. so got myself a, an online job which is now very popular apparently <laughs> um, but yeah so I so now, uh, so I made, I made the jump and I was like, go to Bali the, um, and work. This is a sales job, high pressure job. Um, but I had to, the only drawback was I had to work at night. So um, that was kind of one of the things that I attributed to my, um, my thought processes and my mental health um, later on in the year, especially with COVID hitting, uh, because there's no autonomy there. Yeah. You know, um, like you guys, like, like I had to take the uh, the night off to go and have that meal with Dom. You know, like oh, uh, you ah, guys, yeah. yeah, you guys could all socialize and actually, 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 no, I think that that uh, maybe not actually. I think I was having a sabbatical at that point. But anyway, blah, blah, blah. um, yeah. So, <clears throat> excuse me. The point was, you, you didn't have the opportunity to hang out with your friends in in yeah. those environments where you and I met, which was a friend's dinner. So yeah. that wasn't available to you. Yeah, and I've kind of felt a bit isolated and then it started making me question, like, is this really working? And, you know, like, then the whole, like, sort of midlife crisis kind of thoughts come through, like, oh, like, what am I doing in my life? Like that. And, and like, some other things that I won't go into sort of attributed it as well. Uh, and that sort of, and when, as COVID hit, mm. that was just the icing on the cake, really. Like, it was, yeah. the communication back home with work was quite tough. Uh, and, um so they didn't communicate very well um i think they were struggling as well everyone didn't know how to handle this because we were losing clients left right and center it was a sales job no one wants to buy in that, in that period but we pulled it out of the bag but i was it was very very high pressure and i was exhausted by it and i think that's where i was like yeah. oh that's where i really had gone into myself and became reclusive and stopped surfing stopped even seeing my friends on that precious weekend that i had you know because i had weekends to connect with people but i just just kept myself to myself but before that um yeah. before it all came to a head i found art and i actually went on a <laughs> uh a, a publication in london just did a story about me recently but they got it slightly wrong they said that my friends took me to the art classes to help myself but i think that was just a bit of artistic license <laughs> I, it was actually not it was actually i actually went on a date with the with the, with the, with the uh with the art teacher and she told she uh, told me to come to our art class so i was like of course i'm gonna go then <laughs> she says, go on, go. <laughs> yeah a bit of romancing with your art as well that that is sexy yeah <laughs> <laughs> well they, i didn't last anything longer than date two i friend zone myself because apparently i was pretty good at art so i just became a student instead <laughs> and yeah apparently i was pretty good at art and like everyone in the class was like what the hell did you really paint that and and i was like yeah I was, you, is, have you painted it before i was like no it's First, and they're like they couldn't believe it and actually my second one's behind me that i um mm. i'm not sure if you're doing this on video as well if you're publishing it on video um but yeah so mm -hmm. if you if you yeah, like i say guys if you are listening to this and you want to see all my artwork it's plastered all over my instagram facebook and youtube so have a little absolutely do yeah. yeah absolutely what i'll do is i'll, I'll uh, tag all of your information in um both on the the jenkinsonimpact.com website and then also on youtube and then some information on instagram as well because your artwork is incredible man and, and that was the i mean that makes that makes interviewing you a little easier than just being the mental health story because if your art was shit house and it was just a story it'd be a little harder to sell so yeah great work well, on that, that one it that, makes the whole it. process easier right <laughs> well, that, that's it Do you know what? and that's what leads that will lead me on nicely to why i've built this platform because Sure. The art, the art is a great narrative, you know. Like, um, but mm. it's not my main passion. I mean, it, I don't know what my main passion is now. Actually, I'm kind of all over the place. But I really love storytelling, and I love making videos, and I love vlogging, and mm. I love the idea of being a travel vlogger. I think that's everyone's dream, or lots of not everyone's, lots of people's dream to be able to mm. travel around the world, go surfing, yeah. vlog about it. But there's so many, so much competition for that out there, and to try and get views and. Mm stuff on YouTube, it's very difficult, you know, because you've sure. lost in the sea of people trying to do this. And unfortunately, the only people that really make it are the Silver Spoon kids that have loaded, are loaded already and have the means to. So um, now I have the narrative. I've got some content, which is really interesting that people really mm -hmm. resonate with, that I yeah. can now add to the story. Um, so basically what, so to go back a bit again, is that so after the, the pandemic hit and I found that I was depressed and all I was doing was painting to get myself through it. 
um, I realized that everyone was taking notice. You know, people were looking at my Instagram feed because I was sharing my paintings to stories and they were like, what the hell, Graham, can you paint me a picture? And I'm like, well, mm. then, the, and then imposter syndrome kicks in and you're like, oh, I don't think I could, I could actually charge for it. So how about, you know, I'll, <clears throat> I'll paint you a picture from my uh, intuition for you. It'd be like a nice little surprise for you. You just give me the postage packaging and some a little bit towards materials sure. and maybe towards some charity as well. And I was like, ah, oh, okay. and they're like, cool, yeah, they're down for it. And then basically, the yeah. su surprise commission was born. Okay, so this is what I do. I basically, this is crazy. A lot of artists go to me like, what the fuck, Graham? Like, I cannot believe. I'm allowed to swear. Sorry. Uh, they're like, I mean. I do it sometimes, so you just, it's all right. Okay, it, it slips out every now and then. It's just part of being human, isn't it? <laughs> a little F-bomb comes out every now and then. And, right, and, and, and English. <laughs> and yeah. English and Australian, there's always an F-bomb. As long as we don't have well, any C-bombs, let's but yeah, there's so many we can have an agreement now. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, there's so many C-bombs in Australia, isn't there? <laughs> oh, <laughs> apparently, you, isn't apparently there, just? You can't say it in Canada, apparently. Well, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> For those well, listening, if you don't know what C-bomb is, go and look it up because we're not going yeah, to be giving any not, specifics here. We're not going to say that naughty word. <laughs> That's right. Right. <laughs> Where was I? Hey, where was I? I was just, uh, I went off on a tangent then. What did I have? The, the commission was born and art, artists yeah. were saying, artists yeah, were saying like, like, how have I'm you like, done this? Yeah, they're like, yeah, of course. Why, how the F? <laughs> um, and they're like, because they, because a lot of artists, they, they have to make money through commissions, which is kind of makes art feel a little bit like a job because someone's saying, here's a picture of my baby, mm. paint it. And then you're under pressure and then you might not connect with that image. And then you, then you're, you're like, oh God. And then it becomes to feel like work. I never ah. want my art to feel like work ever. So I've, I now say to people straight up, if you want yep. a painting from me, you go on the list and you have no idea what the hell you're going to get until it unfolds in my stories. And you're basically buying a, a, a you're basically buying a, um, what's the word? An experience rather than a painting. So they know that from the outset and they love it. Beautiful. They love it because it's, immersive and interactive i tag them in it i tag they then share it on their profile share it to their friends and then yeah. that brings people back to me and it's an immersive experience and then on top of that i'm weekly vlogging or trying to weekly vlog it's more like two weekly at the moment monthly but as as i get more into a routine it will get quicker but then they get yeah. the, then their their painting is featured on one of my vlogs as well so they get a memory of all of the time lapses as well so they don't just get a painting they get an incredible immersive experience which they can then sh have for the rest of their life they've mm. got this painting on the wall that has gone into a message as well because as well guys like what happened with my uh, vlogging is that i realized there was a narrative and then also i wanted to give back about mental health and how art helped me get through a shit time so i Basically, yeah, basically now my, what I would say, label myself is the mental health ambassador where I'm interviewing different uh, people, charities, um, artists that are in the mental health space, fitness, anything that's to do with uh, alternative therapies to medicine uh, alongside medicine. I'm not going to sure. poo-poo medicine because you know, medicine is for, is, is for some people, but we, people don't know that sure. there are other stuff available. And that's exactly what yeah. I want to do with my vlog. So having this immersive experience is also helping save the world as well so people are paying me good money to do a painting where they have no idea what's going on and other artists are like oh my god that is like the holy grail of being an artist and like yeah they said it to me you paint whatever the heck you want yeah and then then and that way they get the best out of me and i haven't screwed up yet every time i've done it i've used my intuition i look at their their social medias mm. i might have a chat with them i might even chat with one of their friends in secret and uh, well, with their <laughs> big brother is watching you know yeah with their permission you know just to get a bit of an idea of, of what i could how i could think outside the box you know because mm -hmm. there might be like a mum with triplets and then everyone's gonna think oh he's gonna paint something about triplets but i might think hang on a minute maybe maybe i won't but then you know like it's just like that's a that's basically the experience I want to give people. And, and yeah. they... well, I guess, Graham, you could then be, you could end up painting something, and I'm sure this has happened, that's super aligned to who they are as individuals. However, likely something they wouldn't have thought of, which makes it even more exciting. Basically, I'm Father Christmas. The character. You... <laughs> yeah, I'm Father Christmas. You look like Father Christmas. <laughs> Just at Christmas time, you've got to dye that all white and you are done. Well, do you know? 
you know what this is it like this is one of the things that I've always loved about um Christmas mm. and my upbringing of my family as well is about giving uh, not giving to receive and like literally just like yeah. and it's amazing to, to be able to paint something um for someone that uh you know that's going to make them smile and a couple of stories yeah. I've had I painted a I painted a picture for this one girl, um, which I went bold. I did a portrait of her and her friend because I saw the picture. I instantly connected with it. I was like, boom, that's it. And it was one of my friends that she yeah. was friends. It was basically, it's it called Soul Sisters. There's a vlog and there's also a, uh, yeah, okay, you know, you know the deal. Go to the social medias. But she's hugging her friend. And I just love that moment of where yeah. they hadn't seen each other for years and they were like sharing a moment. Yeah. And I was like, that's it. And then, but. Binks, the girl who I painted it for, she's also friends with the other girl who she was hugging in the photo. She'd actually, because Lindsay has actually had a painting of me before, she had flamingos actually. Um, and she, uh, she basically, Binks said to Lindsay, uh, messaged Lindsay to try and prime me, said, oh, tell Graham I like, because she knew I was, she was doing a surprise. Oh, <laughs> she's okay. like, tell Graham I like, I didn't get this message though. Tell Graham I like pineapples and landscapes. <laughs> after i'd started my commission i found out this message and i was like oh no she likes pineapples and landscapes and i've just chosen a a picture of her and her friend as a portrait which is like you know her and a friend it's like a very bold move but like my my, my when i met when she when she saw it unfold she messaged me and said mm -hmm. graham i don't i wouldn't have ever chosen this to be painted but i'm mm. so glad you did because it's the, one of the most important pictures and images of me and my friend Lindsay uh, I've ever had yeah uh, I, it's, and that particular picture I found on her Facebook she said that's on her fridge and it's been on it's been traveling with her yeah. to like, multiple homes and she's had it on her fridge for for years so my intuition absolutely kicked it out of the park uh, on that one amazing she, yeah so th that's the kind of experience that you get when you and you come and get a painting of me and there's a long list that's, now i've got four 13 people in front of me now that's incredible man how did you develop that um that process with the intuition i mean intuition isn't a process but like how did you develop that trust in your process of using your intuition to then develop something that's going to take a lot of time and you, because i mean for those who haven't seen yet and please i encourage you to have a look is that the immersive experience is what makes this even more special than artwork is that you, you go to so, such great lengths to to do like the uh, um, you know the sped up uh, filmography or videography of you painting and you interact and you talk and there's there's overlays and it's 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 so immersive and exciting. Yeah. So you know when you're going through that process, like once you've committed, you're in, right? Like yeah. this is this is you going like this is what I'm painting and yeah. I'm not just like the, the the amount of time that goes into it, not just painting it, but then making sure that you have content to share and that you know it reaches the right people and they can have a great experience as well. You've actually although you're living the dream in the surprise commission, you're also creating, um, you know, a labor intensive process for yourself that requires that level of trust and intuition that from the get go, you go like, this is going to work because I'm filming the whole thing. And then you go to the end and that, that, that's it. There's, a, there's like one shot. Yeah. Well, it is labor intensive. And the thing is I <laughs> do communicate and I think communication is the key mm. because like, of course, like I want to make sure people are happy and, um, sure. And there's another thing to add to that as well, like not just all yeah. of that, what you just said, but the music as well, I really pay attention to. I've, I will also find, find out what music they like and I'll think of Out of the Park on that and find a nice cover version of that song. That's that phenomenal, use, man. So the Soul Sisters one, I used her favourite tune that meant something <laughs> between her and Lindsay. So I asked Lindsay, what, what song would you yeah. really love? Would she love that reminds you of her? And they, and they, and I put that on there. But anyway, yeah, so with going back to that last question well you're, that's that's everything i mean you're, you're you're hitting like audio visual kinesthetic like it's entire like sensory um sweet for a human being <laughs> the asmr like what, what is yeah. it that you're missing i mean touch but they get that once they get the painting like you were hitting all of the sensory yeah. points for a human being as a part of this experience which is beautiful I think that's why it's going so well, you know, it's uh, really picking up pace and um, because it, because, well, one thing, mental health as well, touches everyone in the world, no matter what you think, if you're the happiest person in the world, 
Intrin- uh, so um, internally or externally, it's going to affect you somehow because you are going to know someone that's going through some shit. Okay, so it's mental yeah. health affects everyone. And I think that's another thing that really connects with people and why this is getting so popular and why I'm so pleased to be a part of it because, you know, like I want to help the world and I am, I am helping the world. 21 countries, on your by the way, we'll go into that in a second. Um, huge. But um, yeah, yeah, so what was I saying? I, was, I do this, I do tangents. <laughs> and then I, you want, you want to be, be ex- <laughs> experienced the most, so you want to make a change. Um, it affects everyone in yeah. some way, if, if it's internal or external, even if you're happier person in the world, it happens to, happens to everyone, some sort of mental health challenge. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, basically, well, that's that's basically it, really, isn't it? That's the answer. <laughs> well, that's you. You, you <laughs> hit a really, you hit a really powerful point there, Grant. It's like I want to call you Mister Coolis. Just feel it feels much more uh, distinguished <laughs> with this new beard. It just hit me, Mister Coolis. <laughs> Mister Coolis. You, well, you, you've hit a really important point there, and that's that mental health. I mean, mental health, emotional health your state of being, your internal dialogue, your external surroundings, how you feel about yourself, how you feel towards other people. These things are variable and they can change in an instant, depending what happens. You lose your job, you know, you go in and out of relationships. Mental health can be a really positive thing, right? Like your mental health can be that you've, you know, you've met someone and you're you're the happiest person you've ever been or, you know, you've discovered your passion like you have. But ultimately throughout the journey of life, everybody is met with a roadblock of some sort that affects them in a, in a way they might not anticipate it. And how they deal with that is yeah. going to be variable from one person to another. And like you said, art is fantastic for some people. I know some people that have, have gone into art. Um, a, a woman I know uh, who I worked with when she lost her job, there's a whole journey around that when we lost our jobs together. She started doing painting and she really loved it. It was a great way for her to focus her attention until she got back into the, the working world and, and is on the path now. So um, I guess what I'm getting at is that I completely agree that it affects mental health and emotional challenges can affect everyone and knowing that there are multiple outlets is really powerful in itself. You don't necessarily need to go to the doctor and go on a bunch of pills, which is quite often the first step. You know, there's yoga, there's painting, there's exercise, there's there's various programs and, um, and you know, you can do personal development. There's like a, a complete suite for depending what's going on in your life. Yeah. And another thing is like you said about, you don't need to go to the doctors. I mean, like, um, you know, like it is a good idea to get professional help for sure. And the doctors is a great first step as well. Uh, but the doctors also need education about that. There is other, refer- I mean, oh, that's, I don't know. That sounds, I mean, some doctors, uh, there's not, I mean, I'm not generalizing all doctors here. Sorry if you're a doctor and you listen to this, I know, you know, you should, uh, and I don't know anything. I'm not professional and I don't want to say that I am. And that's something that I need to clear up now. Very important. I just need to uh, direct people to the appropriate channels. But like some doctors in the world, around the world, might not realize, the, they just think the pills are the way. Here you go, bang, have a pill, have a pill, have a pill. Have a pill. Um, but one thing that's incredible that I got on, got in, in touch, or got in line with um, a charity that I got in line with recently or at the beginning of the year, or no, sorry, end of last year. <laughs> wow, it's a blur, isn't it? I mean, COVID, everything makes it. It's, no, okay. it's, it's, <laughs> it's BC and AC, but for, for COVID. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so... Um, Arts on Prescription, which is this charity uh, or CIC, which has been started in Hastings by this amazing lady called Tara Reddy. Now, she has done something incredible. She's embedded art as therapy as an option in a local GP surgeries. So when you go to the GPs, they can, they, alongside traditional approaches in medicine, they, that is now, that's now on the cards. That's now something that's prescribed to people, which is incredible. And every time I tell yeah, people huge, about huh? that, they're like, what? And that's what we need. You know, we need all sorts of things. I know in France, a few, a few years ago, I remember quite a few years ago, I heard that the doctors were prescribing surfing. <laughs> like, amazing. So all, all these kind of things need to happen. And um, completely. It's look, you, you're right. And, and like, let's let's be clear here for the for the disclaimer point like neither of us i am specifically not a healthcare professional i'm not a practicing doctor or any of these things uh, i've been immersed in this world deeply for for a period of time so i have varied or let's not say very i have very specific beliefs about mm-hmm. the industry which i'm not going to share here because it's not relevant but the core of what i one of the biggest things i've learned from this entire experience you know being in bali um being a part of breathwork tantric yoga tantric sex um, meditation, men's development, manifestation, visualization, 
crystals. Uh, yoga crystals. Thank you, crystals. Like the full suite is that different things work for different people. And there are so yeah. many different beliefs that people can have that will then either help, will, will enable something to work for them or against them. So yeah. if art is working, art is working. We're not doctors. And if you want to go to a doctor, if anyone listening, if you feel like that is in your space right now, absolutely go to a doctor. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll share a really quick snippet before we go back over to you in, in kind of my beliefs around this as well. It's like my first ever step with mental health was to a doctor and they told me to do yoga. I think. So, you know, and they, they, they were, it was a small Indian family, local practitioners and they had those kind of slightly more spiritual beliefs which was to lead down that path first and i think that's really great so yeah that's a nice wrapped up well, well with um with saying that as well something that i would like to add to that is of course yeah we're both not professionals but does not does not discredit us at all because i spoke something very encouraging that i, I spoke to someone mm. very encouraging the other day a girl called stephanie who's called stephanie therapy on instagram so maybe link her in she mm. is a trauma stephanie stephanie, Ther- stephanie therapy she's a a trauma yeah. mental health um, therapist and she does sort of the, the, the relationship goes down the relationship route people that might have had breakups etc uh, sure. but um, I got, we got in touch because I'm looking for people to collab with and to add to my vision yeah. which we can talk about in a minute um, and she yeah. said to me this is really really encouraging she basically said uh, look Graham honestly like I, I am totally like down with what you're doing and and yes you say that you're not put you're not professional but that doesn't mean that you can't be a voice and then don't ever let anyone tell you that because we need people like you as well to yeah. get down get in the, and I was like that's so nice and like you're, you're right because there is like at some point I'm thinking oh do I am I really qualified to say this yeah um, but the thing is like it's just all experience really and like if you can come from a lead experience come from yeah. a place for experience and you know i mean everyone's got experience in this you know like as long as i can i can 100 percent be a mental health ambassador i am going to be going through the steps this year to self-develop and take awesome. more responsibility over this i'm going to be doing some art therapy courses i'm going to do my mental health first aid so i've got a bit more talk to talk about i'm going to i'm always learning about psychology anyway through different podcasts and by yeah, my sure. man, blind, blind, blind boy podcast blind boy boat club podcast amazing i always give him a shout out one of my heroes yeah, good. also shared some of my stuff the other day which i could not uh-huh. well a few weeks ago shared some of my or yeah. i made i i rehashed some of his content and t- and then put it on my page my story feed saying check this guy out he's one of my main inspirations of 2020 and then i went live to tell all my audience about what i just did and to explain it and then as i was live i saw all these new followers come up i was like what what's going on and then I was actually talking about manifestation. I want to manifest meeting him or, or connecting with him in some way. Uh, I, that's what I really want this year. But oh, yeah. follow, follow, keep coming. And I was like, what the hell's going on? And then I came on and I saw they're all kind of like yeah. Irish followers. And I was like, I saw a copy and paste of the message. Said, hey, guy, hey, man, thank you for following me. Uh, what, uh, uh, why, uh, I just want interested in, in the marketing space of why, why you follow me. And they're like, yeah, blind boy just shared your shit. And I'm like, what? I went straight to it. I was like, <laughs> He doesn't share anything. He's got a, a listenership of 125 million follow um, listens across his whole podcast. Wow. He's got 100,000 <laughs> followers. Yeah, well, not massive on, on Instagram, but 100,000 followers, which is still big, you know, but the fact that he never shares anything and he shared the whole sequence of me introducing him, the bit that I rehashed the interview of him, and then at the end saying, go and follow him, he's a legend. So I manifested that and it happened literally as I was going live. I was like... What that's incredible, man. Hey, congratulations. Yeah. yeah, and then I got loads of really cool people uh, add me yeah, and other people like other podcasts. I've been on three different podcasts, two Irish ones, a Scottish one, now yours. <laughs> but yeah, and new yeah, new people like wanting commissions and patrons, and it's just like a really nice little community to tap into. And yeah. <laughs> There's another tangent there for you guys. Dude, you, I, I love no, that's okay. I love the passion that's going through, man. This is clearly like a space you are incredibly passionate about and you are experiencing so much success and you're making such a positive difference in people's lives. And that that is really what it's what it's about. That's why we're here. That's 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 specifically why you and I are talking, but it's also um, one of the one of the beliefs I have about why we're on the planet is the positive impact that we can have on other people's lives. So to be recognized and to be shared by somebody that you look up to in that way that has, you know, a loyal following and has a great reputation is mind blowing. And you talk about manifestation a lot. Oh, where, yeah. Where do you sit? Where do you sit in the the world of manifestation and, and this kind of spiritual beliefs? Like, how do you how do you sum it up? Right. Well, you know, I in a in a spiritual sense, um, I'm agnostic. 
okay so i don't follow or practice any religion like i've been brought up in a in a christian family which i'm very very happy about because i i really really resonate with a lot of the the morals that come behind it um yep. and yeah and i would say that i'm agnostic in a sense you know that um there's something else at play whether it is on a scientific level or you know whether you know like we you know we're you know basically put good into the world you get good back that's that's one of the main things because you know once you start doing positive things you're going to be attracting positivity around you like oh. that hot saying uh, a good a try a, a good tribe a good vibes attracts a good tribe now so with manifestation i i am a firm believer also as if you don't ask you don't get okay and a lot of people that will be sitting there thinking oh should i do this should i make that first step should i do that should i ask that person i'm like well if you if you think you should then you should and if you don't this is gonna yeah. come a lot slower <clears throat> so i just love just putting things out there you know just asking yeah. hey like the other day this is happened within 24 hours i of course i've got a bit of a platform now so i have you know it's easier things do come a little bit easier now but i didn't have this platform two months ago all right and it's just snowballing so i just i tested the waters i'm like right i haven't got a surfboard i left it in bali because i couldn't be asked to bring it back it's a big heavy log sure. and um i was going through some shit as well i just wanted to get home you know i didn't want any extra baggage with me and i haven't got a surfboard so i put out a message saying surf uh, surf brands a message to surf brands i am a mental health ambassador yada 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 if you want to be in line with my message i need a surfboard i'd love to work with a brand um anyone out there who sees this uh, get in touch and here's my email but like Within 24 hours, I got sponsored yeah. by Oblong Surfboards. So Oblong Surfboards are my, now my sponsors. I haven't got any of the stuff yet. They're sending me some stuff to wear and stuff and make a post. But this is the first official time I've ever said anything about them on media. But <clears throat> yeah, within 24 hours, they pick me up. They're making me a nice, huge nine foot eight log uh, with, with flamingos all over it and uh, with their logo on there. And they want to get into the into the mental health space, you know, and, and do something good for the world as well. So and it'll help their brand. And also, you know, it, they actually got a very good deal out of it because they get what I'm I don't know. If, here we go. This is obviously one of the karma cards. Obviously, oh, yeah. Which obviously, you've got to tell us about the karma cards yeah, as well. Yeah, I'll tell you that in a second. But obviously, like their branding will go on the back with mine, and this is going around the world, and it's growing, 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 growing. And they, they, you know, so, so, so they, I don't think they realised that that's what was going to be offered on there. You know, I mean, I mean, I don't care. I mean, that's that's real estate for advertising, and I could probably sell that for loads, but I don't care about that. It's about Show the us what, what is it that looks on there. Show us what's on there from from Oblong. So can I guess some frame of reference? Oh, the, oh this oh, so basically off with the board. <clears throat> yeah, talk us through it. So basically, um, obviously, should I explain the karma cards? Yeah, let's okay. talk us through the karma cards. Yes, okay. Because right. I watched that one evolve, and I thought that was really clever. You haven't had I think your pack it's yet. a great way to scale how you're helping. Yeah, you haven't had your pack yeah. yet. You need to no, be I sad. Up. <laughs> He's called me out. I, I will sign back up. Don't you worry about that. Yes. Well, I, I can get these over to you very soon. I've got a way, actually. I've got a printer's, which skips out the whole plane thing. I did them for Bam Bam. She got hers over there. Like I We should talk about that experience as well. Yeah. That was really fun. Yeah, that was yeah, but cool. you're going to have to send these to me. Send these to me in Perth. And I also want to get this around so we can get some more people signed up oh, as well. Oh, okay? amazing. Yeah. All right. So um, the Karma Card Project, hashtag Karma Card Project. This was what was born out of... So... Obviously, let's go back to the part of the story where obviously I started making vlogs. People were starting to take notice and then the surprise commission was born. Now, I also set up a Patreon account, which is like, a similar ones out there. You've got buy me a coffee now. And it's a way that it's, it's a new consciousness of, of artists, of, of earning money for artists. Is that the right way to say it? Money for earning? Co oh, whatever. Conscious yeah, way? So, yeah, a different way, a different consciousness of earning money for artists that's, okay. that's right yeah that's, that's to me. <laughs> i think it makes sense yep. um yeah Coin so, it. We'll, we'll, we'll tm it for you mate yeah right well basically you know obviously with music industry especially what was hit quite hard uh and the fact that youtube sort of take over every creator now and you have to get those follows to get mm. to make money from ad revenue now totally. that is that's all going out the window now you can yeah. have the small 
community of people that aren't you know so you don't have to have millions of views you don't have to have millions of listeners you just need to have create and, and cultivate a really nice small community that are passionate about your message and this is what what's great about patreon um so <clears throat> i signed up patreon basically to say every time i do a vlog i was like right first off yeah. 10% of the money is going to go to a mental health charity. The rest will go towards me creating this vlog. If you like the content that I am sharing, please donate a price of a coffee or, or a pint once a month. And that will pay for me to be, to me to do this content. And then it's sort of developed into that's going to pay for me to be a mental health ambassador, all of the charities and the, on all of the other stuff that I've got going on, the collaborations and events that I'm going to be doing in the future as it grows after it pays me a wage, I'm going to, and reinvest it into a business so I can then actually spread even more love and positivity and joy around the world, then that's where the money's going. Also, what you get are the karma cards. Okay, now the karma cards, this oh. is going so well. And I've already had amazing feedback from people receiving these that were unwilling, un unknowingly, unwillingly, unwillingly, <laughs> unknowingly going to get one of these from my patrons. So yep. my patrons basically get a pack of six of my artwork in gift card format every six months for signing up. Okay. So that's what I want to give back. Okay. The idea is it's about spreading positivity and love around the world to people that will need it at that precise moment, or just to reconnect with someone that they may, or maybe have not spoken to for a while. In turn, what happened actually was quite, quite interesting with this is that someone received a card just because they wanted to reconnect, but didn't realize they were going through some shit. And that person mm. messaged back. I've got the message actually, I'm gonna make a post about it later. Um, saying that she said she cried and said she um, she was going through some shit and didn't realize, didn't she, and, and hadn't told anyone. And that card absolutely made her day. And so that's this is how, that's how yeah, that's how powerful this is. So, just to, to basically, you get a packet of cards every six months, you, Keep as many as you want, because it's my art prints. You can stick them on your wall, put them in a little frame if you want, you know. Um, but then the rest send on uh, to people, uh, to family, to friends. And just to explain the process so you know how powerful it is. Right. To the millennials out there, I'm a millennial as well. We're both millennials. We're still in the 1980s. So we just made it. I think it's 1980. Um, <clears throat> uh, people, people have forgotten or don't even know about letters. There's a great guy called The Postman who actually uh, does bring other stuff other than bills. But this is what's so powerful. You get a gift card, you open it up. You have to take this mindful process to think about something with your pencil and write and maybe draw a picture and then write something with caring right. and loving. So that's mindful. You stick it in the envelope. You have to lick it and stick it. You have to then walk to the post office, stand in line for a half an hour in a social distance queue to go to the postman, to, 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 the, to the postmaster, Get, buy some postage, stick it on the envelope so you're paying for it, put it in the envelope, and then it's delivered. So the person that receives this realizes how powerful and what you've gone through to do that. So it just makes it much less throwaway than a text message or an email, you know, which is what everyone does nowadays. So I've, and, and this is going to save lives because it's a, it's a two second moment when you receive it and open it. But that will last a lifetime, and that goes yeah. on the spectrum. That goes on the on the either end of the spectrum. If you can say something shit to someone, they will remember it. If you say, if you put some positive stuff like this, they will remember it. And now that's the best way I felt I could give back to my patrons. I was giving prints at first. I gave you a print, didn't I, at the beginning? Um, but it just because it's growing so much, it's just too much. Angels, to do a separate, yeah, angels, yeah. There's too much to do. So I was like, right, set a date once every six months. If you come on, even if you can't afford to pay. Is no minimum, okay, at the moment. I might have to introduce a tier later on as it grows, but um, at the moment, no, no donation is too small because even if you can't afford to pay as much it costs the cards to be printed and postage, it doesn't matter because it's about the message mm. and it's about spreading that. And then, you know, and this is where it yes. comes on back with, with, the, with the growth aspect bit of it because marketing-wise, it's absolutely genius if I do say so myself. It's got my picture on the back. It's got, explains what it's all about. It's got a, um, a QR code to my Patreon and then all my social media handles. And then Oblong Surfboards will have their little piece there. Um, and awesome. you know, like, <clears throat> and like, and all of this money that comes back, yes, it, it might make me a, a very good living, um, but this is a business and I'm going to be reinvesting it into 
lots of different groups i'm going to be let given out this is something i've learned spiritually as well from my mm. parents like tithing you know giving money to get to it give, giving to receive you know that will, will happen you know you let light out you get light back um so that's something that i really really have um going to be as key for this and i just want to be able to help as many people yeah. as possible i don't have to give to a specific charity i can do random acts of kindness to people i might find that there's someone yeah. oh hang on, hang on a second i'm gonna go and hang on uh -oh. do it so while we, we wait for that moment you can see in the background there there's a bunch of great oh he's back i was just talking through some oh. of the background if you duck I just, yeah. I just, I just, I just lifted it up and hung up. Oh, okay. Well, I thought I might have had thirty seconds to talk with myself. I was going to talk, <laughs> going to talk three hours. That's okay. Second. Even better. What can happen is after this. Sorry, sorry, mum. Sorry, I just hung up. I just hung it up. So you can do one four seven one. I, I still live with my parents. <laughs> don't talk to me when I come in. <laughs> Did you hear that? Yeah, you have to answer me. All right, all right. Okay. Hello, she says. So, hello. That's Melita Cullis. If you so look at the vlogs, you will get to love her. Unfortunately, she won't be on the vlogs too much longer. Well, she is will. she there? Bring her in. Let's say hello. <laughs> Mom. Mom. Mom, you need to come here because they want to say hello. <laughs> well, come, and say hello. come and say hello. I'll get all the glasses on my head first. All right, I'll take the headphones out. This is Ollie. This is my hello, friend. Ollie. This is Melita College. Hello, how are you doing? Can she can she hear yes, me? Can hear you. Your beard looks yes, no. Hey, cool. Your beard looks beautiful, not like this thing. Thank you. She's Thank my, you. I did have a trim before the before the video. <laughs> she's what? Sorry. This is exclusive. You got an exclusive here already. Like I, I I ban my parents from the kitchen uh, normally, and uh, now she's in. I ban him from nicking my pencils as well. <laughs> it doesn't work. But if you see the vlogs, you, you'll get so love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, He's my little, she's my little he. She's my little hey, elf. How are you, Ollie? <laughs> he does talk, doesn't he? But he's got so many good things to say. Um, I've seen you in a bunch of the videos as well. I, I'm great, thank you. I'm in, I'm in Lombok uh, in Indonesia. Oh, Graham and I met in Bali. And so we're podcasting to talk about his fantastic painting journey. And I thought well, it was a great opportunity to bring you onto this because I've seen you featured in a bunch of the different videos and you are a great character character as a part of the narrative that comes through oh thank you he's gonna have to include me from a distance because i'll be sending him little videos of me every now and then to put in because <laughs> he's gonna will. leave on monday well, I, well, I think, would, you like to see one of would you like to see one of his paintings i'll bring it round. <laughs> she's gonna get she's bringing around the uh hong the picture, kong one the one that's going to hong kong it's a big one the, the hong kong one Holy macaroni! So this one, oh, was, how good is that? One of my friends, Hannah yeah, talk us Cole. through it. Uh, yeah, Hannah and uh, Hannah and Cole, Hannah Cole, my friend Hannah Cole from school, um, and Tim Tate. They're a couple in Hong Kong, um, and uh, they got in touch for a prize commission, joined the Patreon ship as well. And I chose. I looked through the social medias. They wanted something that was loosely based on Bali or New Zealand. And then I Beautiful. found a picture of their daughter drawing on the sand. Uh, yeah. It was New a, Zealand? In New Zealand, yeah. It's beautiful, isn't it? That is absolutely stunning. So you're, you're sending this, do you think, to Japan? Well, I'm sending it to Hong, Hong Kong. Scary. Sending it, I'm sending it to Hong Kong to, uh, today. I might have to get in with it so that it gets there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could book a flight and you can, you can sit next to it and then have yourself a little holiday on the way. A few more patrons so uh. you can send me. <laughs> So that's oh, what it's about. I'm, I'm, <laughs> so, right, Graham, get out, get out of here now. See you, Ollie. <laughs> I'm married, so you can't have my number. Oh, damn it. I was just you about to uh, have a little word with Graham. Oh, love his friends. It was great to meet you. And you, darling. God bless. Bye bye. See I'm you, darling. Bye. Right. All right. Get out of the kitchen. Get out. I'm going. <laughs> right, I'm going to go and shut the door. You know oh, that was a problem. treat, man. I can't shut it properly. Yes. Dad was right. looking for the keys. Oh, where's my glasses? Bye. Bye. Now, this is what happens when you are producing artwork as your new passion and working on building a business at the same time, isn't it? It is exactly what there's happens. There's a bit of living at like, home. And you know what? scaling the business and there's getting the helping, the helping hands 
that with love. She's obviously absolutely overflowing with kindness and love. I mean, man, that must be the greatest resource to have around you when you're doing this work. Um, absolutely amazing. Like what I was, I, I actually went on this other podcast. Or it was, no, it was a, it was called Lockdown Links. This girl called Rebecca is amazing. Who's got this thing for people that are creatives that want to just, you know, their their industry has been stifled, but they want to think outside the box and connect with people. So it's like a networking event. Mm. And uh, I was speaking to them about it, and I was like saying, "Yeah, I moved home," and you can see they're all quite young, and they're like, they're like, oh, like that. They're like, you're living back with your parents, and like, they, they, they can't see yet at the moment. And I'll probably would have been the same a few years ago, but coming back home this time yeah. has been one of the most pleasurable experiences of my life. Like getting to know my parents at my age, at grand old age of thirty nine. And um, and uh, having that time with them has just, I just it's, uh, it's just really like brought things home and made me realise like how lucky I am uh, to mm-hmm. have this experience because not everyone's going to have this experience. You, the society tells That's you, right. get leave home, get married, have kids, buy a house, and then you're in your own bubble, oh. you know. Um, but then and then you d- might see your parents once a month, you know. And but now I have I've been here since October, and I've got to know my parents properly as an adult yeah. and it's, I, I could, couldn't, re- couldn't recommend it. I couldn't recommend it anymore. It's been so lovely and they're probably hearing me out there now. So hopefully I'll get a raise of my pocket money. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, man. Look, you, you've hit a really important thing on the head there for me as well, which I think is important to talk about is that you pursued a pathway in your life that you thought was going to be fulfilling and make you incredibly happy which was living in Bali and working and doing a nomad thing, which in theory was going to be perfect, except that because of the working conditions, things started to change. And then you had that opportunity to then reflect and look at what it is that you want to be doing with your time, which naturally comes with challenge because through great growth is always challenge, whether it's pleasant or not, which usually it's it can be quite unpleasant. So, mm. you know, you, you challenge the status quo by moving to Bali to then find yourself moving then on to be with your parents, which so many people are trying to escape, which has been mm. absolutely a, a freedom for you, a gift and a freedom, which is incredible in itself. And for anyone listening, like that in itself, when we're talking about mental health and your journey is yes, the artwork and the way that you're scaling, the impact that you are having. But let's just look at that simple, that simple leap that you took to try a new life in Bali, to, to make the most of it as you could. And then to come to this space now where you've actually created a deeper, more, um, like a deeper bond with your parents, which you wouldn't have probably created if you just, yeah. you know, followed the status quo and, you know, got in a house and been in your own bubble. You've, you actually ended up in a bubble that you were in many years ago, but it's a completely different frame. Yeah. And it's, it's a healthier one. Like that's amazing. Yeah, it, it is. It is incredible. And I think this is actually happening quite a lot around the world at the moment, because I think I, I've heard still other stories of people moving back in with their parents because obviously they, you know, they're worried about Corona and they're, they're going to be shielding there alone. And, and, uh, sure. and I think I think there there's going to be a lot of stories coming out of people going wow like uh, that was that was awesome like you know they might yeah. they might have at the time might have found parts difficult I don't know you know when you live with anyone you find it a little bit difficult like, I've pissed my dad off countless times since I've been here but I think he loves it you see that on the vlogs as well <laughs> yeah 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 absolutely uh, and uh, yeah and like you know um, but like you know like just as a whole, like, I'm going to go away knowing that I just, um, I've had experience which that n- not many other people have. And I'm so, so grateful for it. And I've learned a lot from it and I've grown a lot from it. Like, it's yeah. been like, almost like, you know, like a new business goes into a starter hub. Sometimes you can get those little starter hub things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, basically it's pretty much basically what I've had. I've had, I've had the time and the space, you know, the rent's been cheaper. I've just been help chipping in with, um, with uh, groceries and stuff, but like, I've had that time and space and a couple of amazing role models uh, around to help me get through and uh, help me build. That's incredible, man. And the thing is you're building something here that's very purposeful and impactful, right? So guys listening, like startup, doing a startup in itself is challenging. When you're doing a startup because it's driven by passion that doesn't initially have a product that you are selling, there are inherent challenges that come with that. And you are powering the hell forward and the development of these karma cards is absolutely transformation, transformational for people. So you're able to scale your impact whilst creating a new way to generate more revenue, which is important as well. And that's, I want to just sit on this just for a moment and, and get your feedback on it because, you know, a big part of social impact from the way that I like to share it and what my 
beliefs and my mission is, is that it is about return on investment ultimately. Because mm -hmm. you talked about giving and receiving. If you're giving, 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 you're giving all of your energy, but then you're not at any point making any money back. And then you have, you're with your parents. You don't have the freedom to travel and do those things that you talked about. Well, then at some point that will become less fulfilling is in my beliefs because your ability to go and do the things you want to do to, you know, to buy the podcasting equipment, to be able to reinvest, like you said, it's important to be making money from one of these passion, social impact projects. Yeah. And I think that's fundamental to, to understanding this is like anyone listening, guys, yes, Graham wants to make money from this too, because he wants to have the life that he wants to have. And he wants to reinvest and grow and scale and reach more people and have more of a positive impact. And that comes with making money. And the reason I want to really highlight this is that, you know, artists can inherently struggle. Yeah. And you've already coined something that's been really powerful with the surprise commission and into karma cards, which is very innovative and entrepreneurial and it's going to give you the ability to be able to grow. And it's yeah. important to be able to, for me, I really want to get the message across is that it's still a business. Yeah. Businesses that do good are the ones that are going to deliver a more far reaching impact. Yeah. And that's what you're in a position to do. Exactly. I mean, I could, <clears throat> I could be a, a CEO of a bank, you know, uh, or a CEO of something of an oil company or whatever, and be making shit tons of money, you know, but what's to say, what, why can't I not earn shit tons of money doing stuff that's great for the world, you know? Um, but the thing is, I'm not even thinking about that. All I want is to be comfortable enough to have the lifestyle that I want is to be able to go and travel and meet people and, um, you know, just tick those boxes. <clears throat> Anything else comes extra, that's a blessing. And then, yeah, I'm, I'm not even really thinking yeah, about that. Man. And I have loads of different goals I've set for this year as well. And one of them is I want this to grow. So but this is a business, you know how most businesses usually turn over any profit in the first year? This, this is a business that is definitely going to turn over a profit in the first year. And I, I want to be yeah. able to, um, one of my goals i've got a friend in the book at the moment and she's just left australia to come back home to live with her parents having the same kind of experience as me um and i want her in my tribe and one of my goals that i've set for myself this year is by the end of the year i will have her on a salary and she's going to be doing all of the organization for me and spreadsheets and it'll give me the the creative freedom then because obviously yes. like you said you, your return on investment you know <clears throat> it's not just a monetary thing it's also about uh, about autonomy and having time to do the things you love to help grow so i i want i want stuff like that to be happening by the end of this year and i know it's going to happen it's going to happen and um absolutely well you set the goal and you are powerful manifester right so you will create this for yourself yeah once you've got a goal attached to it and you know you really want it and you're you're emotionalizing it and want and, and knowing it's happening it happens yeah. like that's just yeah. how this thing works so when we catch up in a year's time that person will be full-time there's no doubt about it yeah yeah of course yeah and uh and she yeah she just and, and i trust her as well and i just and that's what i just like i said good tribes good vibes i want all good people around me and the community that i've cultivated as well within the patreon network is so so lovely um <clears throat> it's getting to the yeah. point now where like i forget messages that i sent to them because i message everyone i mm. i am an open book i i try and connect with people as much as possible um but yeah like that's that's something i find really important from a social and sharing aspect as well is that it's very important to look after your immediate community because they're the ones that are going to champion you they're the ones that are going to share your stuff and they're the ones that are giving you the money and um that's that's why my, my early patrons that have joined i've still got yeah. an, i'm two-thirds of the way for my target for it to be fully sustainable yeah. as a as a proper income um, i mean i can survive yeah. right now just about with the paintings as well i can yeah. that tops me up um but um yeah, so the first 150 I've put into this group uh, uh, on Facebook, which is a Patreon group, uh, which I can then have them as my board members and then basically consult with them whenever I've got stuff going mm. on. I also, I also add in all the collaborators and all the other charities that I network with into that space. So it's another great thing for them because there's other mm. artists in there that might want to connect with each other. And um, yeah, mm. it's it's brilliant. I've, I've just really, really loved loved like being surrounded by all of these amazing people and yeah it's this there's so much this is just the tip of the iceberg for me i think um do you want me to tell you the main vision tell us the main vision please even, yeah that'd be great man it'd be, it'd be powerful for people to understand where you're going with this thing right because yeah. there will be a lot of people that 
start a passion project <clears throat> and knowing where they want to be long term is what enables that forward momentum ultimately right and there will be a load of people on patreon a load of people that we will put time and effort into this so the people that are listening to this that are perhaps thinking about following a similar pathway with their own passion yeah then being able to hear your vision will actually provide a really positive impact in saying like, well, you've got to know where you want to go long term yeah. to be able to make sure you're taking the steps together. So yeah, please share that vision with us. Yeah. Okay. So um, I haven't got a website domain for it yet, but I've uh, actually, because it's the one I want, I want it's gone, but it's okay. I'll just keep it back in the drawing board. I won't have a name on it yet. Uh, I did get Karma Dr. Card. Coolers. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Coolers. I did get um, karmacardproject.com. So no one can have that gutted if you're gonna think you're gonna steal it off me all right um but what was um what was it uh yeah so i've got an idea to develop a safe space for people um which i started bashing around the idea of calling it the mm. angels forum so if there's any rich people out there i'd like to manifest if someone could go and find who are, whoever's got angels forum and buy it off them for me that'd be lovely thanks cheers <laughs> <laughs> but anyway i can change the name it doesn't matter um so the angels forum it was inspired on my painting Angels. You know, obviously, mm. I, I think there's a vlog about that. I've got Angels Part One and Part Two. If you want to go back to see that, um, but what happened in Bali? This is one of the mm. key things. One of the key things that happened with my mental health um, um, recovery was having a having two angels. I believe you need to find your angels in everything, in every form, and whether it's art, whether it's a person, whether it's rubbing a dog or a cat, you know. Um, but the two angels I didn't realize were my angels at first, you know, until afterwards, after I started to recover, were Michelle and Sean. And I moved to Madeira to paint and just be by myself and live in a small villa I shared with a couple of amazing people that I met. And they and I was still working the the, the job as well, and it was. I, when you do sales job, it gets very high pressure. They heard that I was struggling at my work. They could, cause I'd be swearing and shouting when I put in the phone down <clears throat> and then Sean would come up yeah. and be like, Hey mate, are you all right? Just literally just if I was okay, you know, cause he heard me shout and then, yeah. and they didn't realize I was going through some stuff in my mind. And, um, but they would take me out. They'd take me, they said, do you want to like, just include me? Oh, we're going to this waterfall. Do you want to come? And I'll be like, just not wanting to get out of bed. I'm like, yeah I'll do it and I forced myself to and um it was just really helpful to have them around you I mean being, yeah. recluse, being a recluse can really help okay but obviously having people around you is very important so I then you know after I started coming out at the end of it it was towards the end of my trip and he was coming home to set this up and move on with it uh, I made him a painting a uh, a, a surprise commission without them knowing um didn't put it on social medias so i just waited until actually no, i think i did but i didn't tell it was for them or did i no i think i might have kept it secret actually yeah uh but then i invited them around and gave them so angels is a forest fire okay that's my mental health state that i was going through at the time i'm not sure if you can see on the video here uh, but mm. there's a tree where there's sunlight sun rays sort of just breaking through in the distance in the cloudy sort of smoky area and then there's two little light orbs who are my angels and they're guiding me uh, towards that light and um so that's that's the painting that i gave them and uh that's like my most famous one i'd say <laughs> because it's going to be in every single karma card pack like i'm going to change the different the cards throughout anyway um but the, this one will stay yep. consistent because it means the most to me um but yeah, yeah. So, so to go back yeah sorry i went another tangent sorry um, that's okay so, tangent away yeah my main vision is the angels forum which is basically like with that girl stephanie that i talked about before as well i'm going to be collaborating with her on different levels and i've got other other therapists that i've been speaking to and professional people all over the world and starting to collect them and put them on a spreadsheet a database where I can then have them there ready to go and hit the button when it goes live. So I want to create a safe space for people, not just in England, but the whole world. Okay. Where you can literally go to this box, cry for help, say, I want to kill myself or something happened. I've just broken up with my missus, whatever. Send that message out there. Yep. Okay. And it goes into this safe space, which it's almost like heaven because you've got a whole bunch of moderators looking at the messages coming in from all over the world. So if someone's in there typing a message in Hindi, 
than the Indian um, representatives that I would have vetted to make sure they align with the same kind of uh, mental health care that I want to provide yeah. for people in this forum. I'm going to be very careful of that as well, guys. I'm also going to safeguard it all, get the correct insurances and make sure that everyone goes through a process before. It's going to be expensive, okay? And that's why uh, the Patreon is so important for me to grow, to get this vision uh, enabled. But um, that way, people in India that mm. haven't got access to... to to health care like this can yeah, yeah. have a have a have a first aid you know they can send a message because a lot of people i'm getting a lot of messages mm. now through from people all over the world actually because my instagram's starting to blow up now uh, and that's fantastic and, yeah, news man kids like saying they want to, like 13 year old kids in india saying they want to kill themselves you know and it's just like it's getting to that point and Stephanie as well will mm. vouch me on this one. She used to message everyone and she says it gets exhausting. You, get, you go through a thing which is called compassion fatigue. Um, and um, mm. but so I want to eventually have this. So it's not just for me to direct them to the appropriate channels, but a, a website where anyone could say, hey, look, just mm. if you can't, I know can I, not everyone can pick up a phone to Samaritans. Not everyone can, mm. not everyone has a phone to, or has credit to, or I know three numbers, but no, it's a brave, it's yeah, a brave yeah, move yeah, to yeah. do that. But a lot of people sure. in this millennial age, and not even millennial, uh, just this age, people have forgotten how to reach out. And like I voicemail everyone, but people will, some people will just text back because they can't do it, you know. But if someone, if there's a space where someone could say, "This is what's going on," you've got a whole yeah. load of moderators in there checking the forum. They can say, "Oh, look, they message the person that can speak Hindi." By the way, someone's just spoken just message in Hindi or oh. Japanese, you know. And then you get that that first aid. They can then help them get them to direct them to channels where there may be some help that's subsidised by the government, or you know, like just to help, just basically to be there straight away for someone. Um, yeah, totally. And and then if you if you and then anyone if you know anyone that wants to to uh, has, has some problems, you can say, dude, just go on to angelsforum.com or whatever like that, and just just type the message in and see what you get back because it's it's an incredible space. Uh, and that is my my main vision for as this grows or not it's not even my main vision it's one of them because i know that the part of the overall yeah sure yeah, one of one of my um yeah i i believe that, that this is the tip of the iceberg still and i want to help people around the world and the karma car project is already in 21 countries okay I've that's got, huge yeah congratulations and man and you imagine and that's so i think i've got 540 cards at the moment that so uh, uh, for this last six months run, actually it's growing. So what's 150 times six? So yeah, what's 150 uh, get, times six? What's that? 900. Yeah, nine, it's the 900 cards would have gone out when I hit my target. I'm at 100. That's patrons. incredible. That's huge. Yeah, that's a lot and, of lives uh, impacted, man. Exactly. That's that's nice. So that's 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 150 people sending six messages or potentially six messages of love around the world to people randomly that might that might need it or might not might they might not know that they need it and they get it it's going to save lives yeah, and like i said so, oh, sorry go on hmm. you go on. i was gonna say so, so what, what can, let, let's let's talk about what can people do to really support that vision overall First and off, you, personally. If you if you can't afford to join the patreon even though it's literally like, like i can say it's no minimum well, let's moment. start with that. So people, people, many people can. So people who yeah. can afford the Patreon, how, yeah. what, 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 how do they sign up and what do they get? You go to patreon.com forward slash Graham Cullis Art. Just sign up. Uh, it takes a monthly pledge from your account, which goes to me and then is distributed into the business of what I'm trying to create here. Pays for the cards, pays for, pays for my vlogging because i'm giving back my hours and hours of my time to create this vlog and this message gives me that freedom that financial freedom not to have to worry about a full-time job because i was doing this with a full-time job until recently and i'd recently had to say let them go and say sorry i can't work for you anymore yeah because yeah. this is something and that, and that was a bold move because I, I was on much more than i am now um but i um yeah, I literally like just need to to get like an av an average wage, 150 people uh, to do it, yeah. and then from there it's growth, 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 growth. But the thing is, the curve on this thing is like this. It's amazing. Um, but yes, well, when you're doing that, good and people can can be a part of it, and you're, you're like the Karma Project, you know, the, the Karma Cards, like when people can see yeah. the impact that it's having and the positivity around it, like people want to get behind it. So, yeah, absolutely, yeah. guys, like get behind this. 
Yeah, and if you can't afford to do it, um, because I know not everyone's in in a, in a financial state right now to be able to do stuff like that, the most important thing I need is word of mouth. You know, I need people to share my content, follow my social medias. Please just go follow my social medias, hit that notification bell. On YouTube is something that's not growing very fast at the moment because I haven't got the time right now, but that is what I'm going to be looking into. Yep. Uh, I'm doing a lot of stuff development at the moment. I can talk about that in a second if I've got time. Um, but yeah, just um, yeah, just follow everything, share everything, like, super like, the little super like, but you know, <laughs> you know what I mean. Just do everything, comments, like everything, tag people. Because, it's all that exposure, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, the more people you can reach, you're seeing it. You, you know, the, this, this, the, 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 yeah, go ahead, man. Well, it sounds very sort of Instagram influencer. Please share my stuff because I want loads of follows. But it's not about that. It's about reaching an audience that need it. Um, and like I said, I'm not, I don't, I'm not worried about having like a whole load of followers. I'd like to get to 10,000 because then I get the other analytics and the swipe up. But whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, well, it does matter. So let's, yeah. I always want to, want to frame that, guys. Like there's, there's influencer... The, the, the thing about influencers, and I just touch on this quickly, is that the reason that it can have such a less than desirable um, connotation is because it can be about ego and vanity, mm-hmm. right? But mm-hmm. these tools, like everything, there's a flip side to everything. I have the coin. The more people that follow your account, that interact with it, that share it with their friends, the more positive impact you have. So the more you grow, the more more goodness going out into the world. So. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> be a effing influencer you're an impact influencer ju- that's a just, good thing yeah, it isn't just a follow it's it's the engagement i need the engagement i need people to okay. share it and talk about it because if if you've got because there are people out there that buy followers and have like a hundred thousand followers but they're basically a hundred thousand followers do, doing this to them you know got right. their backs to them. Um, totally. like, <laughs> yeah. there's no point there's no point of that so I'm all about yeah. cultivating an immediate community, looking after that immediate community. I message every single person. I try to message every single person that follows me with a video message saying, hello, this is me. Thank you so Beautiful, much. Beautiful, man. Um, and that's, that's a lot of work. Um, I do use certain things to gain followers through different uh, avenues, which like uh, giveaway competitions, which are, might resonate with the kind of travel vlog things, which I think is a, very, it's a, it's a good tool. Uh, but I, I, I choose those very carefully. And again, any following I get from it, I know that they're not going to want to stay because there's, they might want to try and win the drone that they, they've gone in for. <laughs> but they, but the thing is, I immediately will sit there, I'll write yeah. two days, and I will message every single one of them, personal message to say, hello, this is who I am. Yes, you're here to win a drone, but this is what I do. If you'd love to get engaged with me, fine. If you're here just for the drone, no worries. See you later afterwards. Uh, but please stick around and check my vlog out. I I work my ass off doing that, and uh, it's uh, yeah. that's And I know that because I've received a ton of messages from you, and we actually know each other. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's, like uh, you know, I'd say like when I every time I message you, this is really beautiful, and I love this, and great work, and we forward and back, and the Patreon. Like there was, there was so much going. Like you're yeah. all over it, man. Yeah. Well yeah, done. You've got to be quick, you know, because people have a short attention span. And um, that's one of the things in this, this, yeah, or, or with how much social media, what well, the globalization of social media, it's just it's yeah. the way of, it's the way now, isn't it? So you need to be quick, you need to yeah. make an impact. All right, Graham, let's wrap this thing up. What I want to do is in the future, we'll jump on another one. We can talk about the self development side that you're looking into now. And then we can chat yeah. about how. Um, the Angels Forum is coming along and how the Karma Cards are launching. And of course, I'm here to support you if you want any, any help with any of your impact strategy or your brand strategy or launching or connections or anything like that. I'm happy to, to hook you up with my network. And anyone listening, if you want part of this to be a help, there's it, in some way to be to be able to support Graham, whether it's because you want to be on the, the Patreon page and you know contribute $5 a month, or if it's just that you want to be able to give some, some positivity for what he's doing, anything and everything is all valid and very much welcomed, right? So what I want to do with wrapping up is the core part of all of this is about sharing positive voices for positive impact. So sharing our voice collectively for positive impact in the world. And you are doing that through what you do every single day. And one of my core beliefs is that through a conversation one-to-one, you can change someone's life. And I have so much evidence built around this that it is unreal. You really don't know the impact of someone's life. So people watching this, they'll be there will be guaranteed people who are watching this who this has really touched them and they'll be really intrigued to go and look at your your work. So with the work that you're doing, what's the change you're hoping to see in the world? 
I want to save lives. I want to save lives. So I want, I want, um, I want to save lives, and I want to, I want people to have a, a, the quality of life, a better quality of life, and a good outlook for their life, and to frame their life and frame their anxiety <clears throat> in a different way, um, because I think you know, there's the, people do like look at um, when they're going through some shit in a very bad light, mm. and uh but once you do come out at the end of it and you've if you do are you able to reframe it into a different way and say well maybe i'm feeling like this because i'm excited to do stuff i want positive changes basically yeah i just want everyone to be happy <laughs> uh as much as they can that's beautiful man guys this is really really powerful so it it is entirely possible, and we know this from I know this from experience that I've had. I know from the podcast we've done before is that a conversation can change someone's life. So imagine how many indirect conversations are happening, even from the Karma Card Project. Six cards that go out to you, and then you get to distribute those to people who may need that extra bit of love, and you weren't they weren't aware that you were thinking of them, and that can have a supremely positive impact on someone's life. So Patreon page, I'm going to link everything below. Um, so the Patreon page, the Instagram, the YouTube, interact, engage, comment, share, get this thing ramping up. There is enough evidence to prove from what Graham is doing is that there is a positive impact being delivered and it's measurable and it is contributing to people's lives in a really great way. And wouldn't it be great to support someone like this who has got such a fucking strong... Oh, oh no. Uh, the the F-bomb. The it, F-bomb it up. came out. There's a kid in the background as well. <laughs> Who's having such a positive impact. Back to the passion, you're so that I really want to give you this <laughs> because you're an absolute character. You have such a great message to share, and you're just a good dude, man. From my heart Thanks, to yours, man. man. I truly believe that you're just a good. Oh, I've done it again. Good dude doing some good <laughs> things. All right, let's get good you out. There. Yeah, mate. Well, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me on, and I'm so glad that. Um, I met Dom years ago and he got me ripped for uh, five minutes uh, for me to connect with you at his birthday party. Ripple effect. Let's cause waves, guys. The ripple effect can be waves. That's, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Let's turn them into the most positive tidal waves of life could imagine. Yeah, exactly. Legend. Mr. Graham Coolis. Graham Coolis Art, you are an absolute amazing human being. Thank you for everything that you have done. And uh, I'm going to share as much information with as many people as possible so we can rescale that impact for you. And uh, I look forward to catching up and talking in the future, hopefully on episode number two, to see what you're up to. Peace. Cheers. Thank you, guys. Obviously, like, I was going through some stuff, you know, like, you, you see in all those movies when someone's depressed, they've got a big, huge, long beard and long hair at the end of it. Well, I, I was yeah. happening to me, you know, I was, I was, I was like, didn't give a fuck. I just wanted to just keep growing it. And like, and I just couldn't be asked to groom myself at all, but I got past the depression and I got past the depressed beard look. And now I'm, I'm into the incredible, amazing beard look and I can't get rid of it. Um, I don't know. My hair's gone a bit wild as well. It's. Oh yeah. Really- yeah. That looks really that looks long. really good. Mate. Yeah, that, really. Long. Oh, but it looks it looks intentional, and that's <laughs> yeah, a, that's and a got, positive. I've got a bleached undercut. <laughs>